Now that we have the keyboard working, let's get the actual game working. So the first step in doing that is let's randomly select a word that the user tries to guess. So first we need a list of all the words in the game. So in constants, I'll create a new Dart file named words. I'll then go const and it will be a list of string. Now initially I'm just going to put one word in in capital letters and that is so we can test this game and then once the game is working then we can populate this with as many words as we want. Now let's randomly choose from this list so I will go to home page and here I'm going to create a variable of type string I'll name this word and we'll initialize this in the init state so I'll use the late keyword here I'll type in and in the init state let's randomly select this word from our list of words. I'll use the random class import dart.math and now I can call the next int method which will randomly generate an integer up to a maximum which will be words and import that library just made dot length so the integer will be up to the maximum in this list of words. We'll return that into a variable named r and now we'll use that to randomly select from that list. So words at the index of R. And now we can store that in our word variable. Okay, cool. So we've now selected a word randomly from our list of words. Now let's go back to the controller. And now let's create a variable that stores our correct word. So here I'll type string correct word and we'll create a method that sets that correct word. So take in a string, which is the word. So here I've just used the arrow syntax to make this a little bit shorter. And let's go to our home page. And now we can call that method. So here I can use provider. Provider. So import the package. Dot of. Now we'll put controller in, in these angled brackets. Import the controller. And now we'll call set correct word and pass in the word that we chose randomly. Cool. Now we also need to set listen to false here to avoid an exception. And we're calling this from the init state where we do not have an instance of a build context. So to avoid an exception, I'll use the widgets binding class dot instance. And then I can call add post frame callback method. And that'll run a callback at the end of the frame when we do have an instance of a build context. And we have a red line here indicating an error. So I'll put a question mark, the null aware operator, which will say this will only run if this is not null. So basically just avoid that error. And then we can cut this and paste it in here. Cool. So this code here is basically just going to pass on the information to the controller about our selected word. Now let's go back to the controller. Now we have the correct word. Let's check the other piece of information, which is what is the guest word. Let's create a new method, check word. And the first thing we need to do is grab the word the user has entered. So we can do that by grabbing the last five entries and tiles entered. So I'll create a for loop. So we'll create a variable which will hold the guest letters. And I want to make this a list that takes in a string and I'll name this guest and I'll set this as an empty list and I'm creating this variable in this method. So every time this method runs, we'll create a new list that's empty. So here we can cycle through five times and guest and we can use the add method, add tiles entered at the index of I dot letter and I also want to store this in a string, so I'll create a string, guest word, and then I can say guest dot join, and then return that into our string. Cool, so we now have the guest word. Now we need to update this so this works on the current row the user's working on. So here, instead of writing zero, I'll write current row times five. So this will start off at zero times five, which is zero. And then the next time that'll be five, 10, 15, and so on. And then here we can write the same current row times five, 
but we need to be at the end of the row on the last column. So I'll just write plus five at the end. Cool, so this will always loop through the last five entries in our tiles entered and then add that into our list which will then return into the string. Cool, so now we've done that, we can test is the guest word the same as the correct word? So I'll write if guest word is equal to correct word, then word guest correct, else word not guest. Now we need to call this method, so let's do this up here where the user presses enter, check word, and importantly we need to cut out current row here so we should not increment until we've actually checked the word. So I'll paste this down here and now we can test this. So I'll type in an incorrect word, word not guessed, now let's type in the correct word pizza. Awesome, word guessed correct. Cool, so this is working. Now let's build on this. So if the user has not guessed the whole word correct, have they here in the else statement guessed any individual letters at the right place? So to do that we can just loop through the guessed word and the correct word and see if there's any letters at the same index that are the same. So we'll create another for loop, for int i equals zero, and this one can just be up to five because the guessed word and correct word will always just contain five letters. And now we can write guess word at the index of i. Is that the same as correct word at the index of i? So let's put that in an if statement. And if it is, we'll write print letter guessed at guessed word index of i. Alright, awesome. So let's test that. But P, I, letter guessed at I, letter guessed at A, and letter guessed at P. Awesome, so we can identify when we've guessed a letter in the right spot. And now the last thing we want to check is are there any letters that haven't been guessed correctly but are contained in the word somewhere? And to do that we only want to look at all the letters that haven't yet been guessed correctly. So to help us do that, I'm going to create another variable, another string, and I'm going to name this remaining correct. And then I'll initialize this equal to correct word dot characters to list. So all the characters in the correct word will be put in remaining correct. And then each time the user correctly guesses a word in the right spot, we'll remove it from this list. So down here I can just type remaining correct dot remove and then pass in the object we want to remove which is guessed word at the index of i i.e. the letter the user has just guessed. And now we've got a list of all the remaining correct letters we can say do any of the letters that the user has not guessed yet do they exist in the row somewhere. So to do that we first want to loop through all the remaining correct letters And we want this loop to be the length of remaining correct dot length. So however many letters are not yet guessed correctly. And for each time it cycles through, we can then cycle through all of the correct letters and see if there's a match. So basically we're going to do a nested for loop. So I'll type for int and instead of i, I'll type j. So it does not override the i on the first line. j is less than 5 and j plus plus. Cool. So every time we loop through remaining correct, every one of those loops will also loop through five times to check does it match any of the correct letters. So to do that we can type if remaining correct at the index of i equals tiles entered at the index of j dot letter and if so we'll write print contains and I'll type in remaining correct at i. Now also here we should take into account the last five letters the user has guessed. So here plus current row times five. Okay, let's test this, a hot restart. I'll type in P 
in the right spot and then Z in the wrong spot and then A in the wrong spot. Cool, so letter guessed at P and also contains Z and A. Okay, awesome. So we're now able to identify a letter if it's contained in the word. Now let's put in a row of Z's and here we should only have the letter guessed at the right spot. Letter guessed at Z, cool. So here, this is working. In the next video, we'll update the green and yellow colors in the app based on the word guesses.